Pedro in Mexico has a question. Paul, maybe because I am an accountant, <laughs> but I am particularly fixated on numbers and specifications in audio gear. All righty. Um, how much of a difference in the overall sound or in different frequencies would it be if you use an amplifier that has, say, 100 dB or 125 dB or maybe even 140 dB signal to noise ratio? Um, zero. The difference between the numbers our accountant friend Pedro has uh, given us here, 100, 125, and 140 dB, I mean, I I've used this analogy before, it's one that Ted Smith gave me. He said 140 dB is the ratio between a single molecule hitting your eardrum and standing next to a jet engine. That's a big difference. You don't hear the difference between 100, 125, and 145 dB. So the quick answer is none. But let's look at the bigger picture. I think more what Pablo is, is talking about. So signal to noise ratio is basically how much higher when you play a piece of music is that loudness of the music compared to turn the music off and you hear psh, hiss. Okay? So from psh, hiss to music at its loudest, that is the maximum signal to noise ratio. Now, when the music, and it's important, and I'm not trying to downplay the importance of signal to noise ratio because if we take it down to where we have a very soft passage of music, you want to be able to hear into that music without hearing the, the hiss of your electronics or of the recording medium. So records have a 60, 70 dB. Now there, the difference between 60 and 70 dB versus 100 dB, absolutely a big difference. A lot of vacuum tube products have fairly high hiss. So when you're sitting in your listening chair, you really shouldn't hear any hiss, even if that system is cranked up loudly. But with vacuum tubes and other older technologies, it's entirely possible that when you crank your system up, if you walk close to your speakers, get within this far of your tweeter, you're going to hear psh, some hiss. That's okay. As long as when you're sitting at your seat, you're not hearing that. Because hearing hiss at your seat is, well, I don't know if distracting is the right word, but it, it definitely changes your perception of what we're trying to achieve, which is this three-dimensional holographic image of musicians playing live in front of us. One exception that many of you are familiar with, vinyl records, which we just talked about. When I put the needle down in the groove of a record, even if that recording has zero hiss, you're going to hear the, the hiss, the background surface noise of the record. And for most of us, we kind of ignore it, we kind of expect it, the music comes out of that, and for most of our listening, we don't hear it. It's okay, it's kind of a nice background. And just as an aside, a great phono preamplifier, and you don't hear this very often, but a great phono preamplifier will separate that surface noise and set it over here, and the music is over here. It's not commingled as with 90% of every phono preamplifier out there. One of the first times on the Stellar phono preamplifier, and we have a new preamplifier, a phono preamplifier, that I can't really talk about yet, but it's, it's a, a major step up from Stellar that will be coming out sometime in the summer, probably in the spring of 2025. But going back to Stellar, when Darren Myers showed me that phono preamplifier, he knew one of the first things I'm going to listen for is when we set the needle down, is there that separation of the surface noise and the music? And there was. And I just turned to him and he goes, you heard it, right? And I said, yep. It is so rare and it is so cool. But anyway, I got off track. 
Fancy that. So to answer your question, no, there's no difference in those numbers. But yes, there is a difference in surface noise, in signal to noise ratio at some level. So hope that helps. Thanks. Bye.